Hey guys, it's Dr. Danielle back again with part two of the endocannabinoid system series. Today's topic is how does THC and CBD affect our endocannabinoid system differently? So when you look at THC and CBD from a surface level, they look like identical twins. They have the exact same chemical formula. They have 21 carbons, 30 hydrogens, and two oxygen atoms. However, when you look at their molecular structure, there is one slight variation. There is a double bond present on cannabidiol that is not present on THC. And so this slight variation causes an enormous difference with how they act individually within our brains. So although THC and CBD both bind to CB2 receptors, and if you remember from the previous video, CB2 receptors are for our peripheral nervous system or our extremities and our organs, they do interact differently with the CB1 receptors, CB1 receptors being our central nervous system or our brain and our spinal cord. Because of its molecular structure, THC binds directly to CB1 receptors, which sends signals to the brain that gives us a feeling of high, and thus it has a psychoactive component. On the other hand, CBD does not directly bond with CB1 receptors, it indirectly interacts with them. It has even been shown that CBD can cancel the effects of THC, making it a great I'm too high remedy. While THC certainly offers tremendous health benefits, its psychoactive components are not preferred by everybody. For example, first responders, military, who when they're on the job would like to take something that's anti-inflammatory and helps to manage their pain, but they can't be high while on duty. Also, pregnant or nursing mothers may prefer to not have THC in their system, as well as addicts, recovering or recovered addicts. I know a lot of my addiction patients will not touch anything, even with minute traces of THC in it. And then also people who need to pass routine drug screening tests cannot have THC in their system. Unless you're taking a thousand milligrams plus of CBD a day, which would be bottles worth, you're probably not going to trigger a drug test. And of course, there's the people that like to dibble dabble, so they might not want to feel high during the day because they're at their job, and so they want something to help with their anxiety, their depression, and their chronic pain. CBD is a great answer for that, but they might need the psychoactive component of THC at night. So I just want to emphasize that CBD and THC have many similarities, but they are also distinctly different because of the psychoactive component. I want to clarify that neither CBD nor THC is better than the other. Both cannabinoids offer tremendous health benefits, and either one or both could be providing you with the relief that you need. This is hugely a personal preference, and it's always based on the needs of the individual. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. My CBD line, Pacifico Organics, is lab tested to have non-detectable traces of THC. I originally formulated it this way for my addiction patients in Southern California. I do not personally have a preference of one cannabinoid over the other. My line of CBD will bring you the health benefits of cannabis without the high and is available for purchase in the link in the description box below. Okay guys, that's all I have for you today. Stay tuned for part three, which is hitting the topic of endocannabinoid deficiency. What are the signs and symptoms and how could CBD potentially help you? Once again, if you could please subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up, that would be greatly appreciated. That helps me produce more videos for you in the future. I'll see you guys soon. Ciao.